everybody, my name is Hubert and welcome to Teach Me Channel. Today we will be learning all about moles. Today I will give you a little introduction about moles and I will help you wrap your head around this new and often strange concept. However, tomorrow we will get more into the equations and the mathematical side of it. Today we will just have this sort of uh, intro. So, without further ado, let's get started. So, what is a mole? A mole is a measure of the amount of the atom or the amount of the molecule. It is not a measure of the weight by itself, it's a measure of the amount, how much we have of a particular atom or how much we have of the particular molecule. I will show you. So, one mole is always, one mole is always equal to 6.02 times 10 to power of 23 amount of molecules or atoms. So one mole is always that number. One mole is always that number. One mole, so for example, one mole of, of carbon will be 6.02 times 10 to the power of 23 carbon atoms. Likewise, one mole of water, H2O, is equal to 6.02 times 10 to 23 molecules of H2O. So, important thing here is that moles can be interpreted in a context of the amount of atoms or the amount of molecules. So we can have this many molecules of water or we can have this many molecules of, you know, I mean, so we can have this molecules of water or this many carbon atoms. Now, likewise, within that water molecule, we have uh, this many oxygen atoms, so 6.02 times 10 to 23. However, as you can see, we have two hydrogens, two moles of hydrogen per one mole of oxygen. So actually, when we split it into atoms, if we stop thinking about molecules and we split it into atoms, then... We are talking about 6.02 times 10 23. So we're talking about double that in hydrogen atoms compared to... So this many hydrogen atoms combined with this many oxygen atoms would give us one mole, in other words, this many molecules of H2O. So this is how we need to be thinking about this. Now, so why, why on earth, why on earth are we using such a weird amount? Why on earth are we using 6.02 times, times 23, you know, times 10 to 20, power of 23 molecules? Why is that one mole? This is not random. This is in fact called this is in fact called Avogadro's constant. I'm going to put it down for you here. So this is Avogadro's constant. Now, what is the importance of that? Well, the importance of that is that Always, 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 this many molecules 
will have a molecular mass or this many atoms will have atomic mass equal to that given by periodic table. It is equal to that number on periodic table. And this will make our life so much easier when we are calculating anything to do with molecules or atoms. So this is why this number is so important. So I'm going to put it down here. So one mole, I'm going to shorten it here, is equal to atomic or molecular mass. So I'm going to be, in order to be more accurate, I'm going to put this down here like this. So mass of one mole is equal to atomic or molecular mass. So, for example, one mole of carbon is equal to 12 grams. Because as you can see on periodic table, atomic mass of carbon is 12. Likewise, one mole going back to these examples one mole of water is equal to 18 grams how because we have two hydrogen molecules so this is two times one hydrogen has a mass of one so two times one and we have one oxygen molecule which is a mass of 18 and if we add those, sorry, oxygen has a mass of 16. So if we add those two together, we will get 18 grams. So that's why one mole of H2O is equal to 18. So that's why this particular number is so important, because this will allow us to predict molecular masses and atomic masses that we need to solve our questions. So now let's move on to some equations. So by thinking like this, by this logic, mass expressed in grams is equal to number of moles multiplied by molecular or atomic mass. So I'm going to underline this. This is very, very important. So this, so if we think about it, it makes sense. If we think about it, it makes sense. So the amount of moles we have, then that's the multiple of molecular mass or uh, atomic mass we would have, right? So say if atomic mass of carbon is 12, if we have two lots of that, two moles of carbon, so we have 2 times 12, which would give us a mass of 24. So this, th this is how I like to think about it. It makes sense. Now, let's finish off the units. So mass is expressed in grams, number of moles is expressed in moles, of course, and molecular mass is actually expressed in grams per moles. So this also makes sense in terms of units. So if we get grams equals moles times grams per mole. So because we are multiplying, we cancel these two terms out, so grams are equal to grams. So this whole thing also makes sense when we consider just the units. Now, so now let's work through some examples. Very, very simple example. So first example is find mass for six moles of H2O. 
So what do we do? We need to find the mass for six moles of water. Now, we know that so we just stick to this equation. We just stick to that. Mass is equal to six times. So two times one for hydrogen, 16 for oxygen molecule. I mean, it's oxygen atom. If we put these together, it gives us 18. So mass is equal to 6 times 18. So 6 moles, 18 grams per mole. And that is equal to 108 grams. So that's a very simple answer to this question. Now, what about if, so we didn't have to do anything here with the equation. We just plug the numbers in, boom. We got an answer. Now, what about if we wanted to find out how many moles in 88 grams of carbon dioxide? What do we do here? Well, we need to rearrange this equation using basic algebra. Just transpose that equation. So, how do we transpose that? Well, we want number of moles to be subject of equation. So, we can divide this side by molecular mass. And therefore, we would be dividing this side by molecular mass as, as well. And that would give us the answer. So, what will be the equation? So, the equation now will look something like this mass divided by mr which equals number of moles okay fantastic so we have a equation that we are going to use so what is the mass the mass is 88 grams as they given us so 88 grams we divide that by molecular mass what is molecular mass of carbon dioxide well carbon is equal to 12 oxygen is equal to 16 so two oxygens are 2 times 16 which is 32 so 12 plus 32 is 44 so co2 equals 44 grams per mole okay so 88 divided by grams divided by 44 grams per Mo equals two moles. There we go. That is our answer for this question. Now, and that's our answer for this question. Now, we transpose this equation here, and I believe that's the best way to do it. Just transpose it mathematically correctly. That will help you learn how to quickly think about these these molecules. However, if you are in a rush and you just want to get straight to it, I will give you the equation triangle for this. So here we have mass, here we have moles, and here we have molecular mass or atomic mass, whatever you want to call it. So how would you use that triangle? Well, if you want to find out the number of moles, you cover up this bit and now it tells you mass is at the top so mass divided by molecular weight will give you the the number of moles which is essentially what we did here likewise if you wanted to find out mass you cover it up with a finger and now you have moles multiplied by molecular weight which will give you total mass so that's that's how you can use that triangle if you are in a rush but i prefer to transpose the formula myself Okay, so this is it for Introduction to Moles. Thank you very much, guys. Thank you very much for watching. I really appreciate every time you do. If you want to stay up to date on daily videos on maths, uh, GCSE level maths, uh, GCSE level science, as well as A-level science, and some university level biomedical sciences, I will be making some of those videos soon too. Please smash that subscribe button below. If you like the video, give it a quick thumbs up. Thank you very much for listening and see you next time.